we're going to start with some arm circles. Feet pointed. Straight. Feet pointed straight. Arms out and start. How many? Um, Ten? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Good. Backwards. You can be, you can talk. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Excellent. Thank you, Merrick. So you have a great class? Have a great class. All right. Feet pointed straight ahead. Bring your hands either somewhere on your body to your chest into your belly or together in front of your heart. And just take a moment to bring. I need to tell them my lost a tooth. Oh, go ahead. Merrick has one thing to share. I lost a tooth. The very first one. Take your hand away so they can see. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. See you later, bud. Okay, right here to this moment, bringing your past and your future to the center and connect to your breath. Allow the inhale and exhale to happen as you begin to take a little bit of control of it. Full breath in, full exhale out. Paying attention to the exhale, squeezing the muscles of your torso together, and then allowing the inhale to happen more fully. Full exhale, full inhale. Again, one more. Stay with this breath and reconnect to this breath as we move through the postures. We're going to go back to arm circle or to neck circles, feet hip bone distance apart, arms down by your sides, and then take your ear over to one shoulder and then let it go down in the front, over to the other shoulder, and then back up and around. Keep moving gently through those couple of them. Reverse your direction. Notice if there's popcorn. And then down in the front and up into the back. Make sure your ears come back over your shoulder as you gently bring your head up. And then down, tuck your chin, let your head slide forward and then come back up. So often when we've been working with Tex neck, it's a slide forward and then a tuck, but the true uh, anatomy of your neck works much better if you tuck the chin, find the deep neck flexors, and then let the head slide forward. We avoid any sheer force in the neck when we do it that way. So even when you're on your computer or on your phone, notice that we're not just in this forward extended place, but that you're being more conscious of your head tilt and head position. Chin tuck and then ears back over your shoulders. Full lift and down. And then ear over to one shoulder. Go ahead and give a little weight to your neck. Lengthen the top side of your neck, pressing it up to the sky. And then bring it up over to the other side. And up 
and then into shoulder shrugs, feet straight ahead again from the heel to the second toe, a straight line, or even the outer edges of your feet all the way straight. That feels a little pigeon toed, but that's really the best alignment for your body. Then knees soften, thighs back, slide your shoulders up to your ears, and then press them down 10 times. Slide them up, press them down. into a shoulder roll, up and forward and around, strong and straight elbows, 50% engagement in your belly, 50% in your glutes, so that there's good connection all the way from the belly into the pelvis and not much movement in the rib cage right now, just movement in the shoulder girdle. Up and back and around 10 times. And then forward once more. Up and forward and around. And back. And then fold your fingers to your palms, bring your hands to your temples, bring them right up, thumbs pointed down, elbows all the way together so they touch, and all the way back. 20 elbow curls. Again, soft knees, glutes active, belly slightly active, letting that hinge of your shoulder work all the way together, all the way back. and release it down. Same grip, fingers folded into arm circles, arms by your sides, take them out, and find the balance. As your arms come up, feel the collarbones get wide, feel the shoulder blade have to move out just a little bit, and then as the deltoid starts to act on this shoulder joint, then notice if you got a little round here, squeeze your shoulders back, Circle forward, 40 circles. Strong elbows. And backwards, palms up, circling back. And then hands behind your head, grab behind your head, gently press your head back into your hands, bring your elbows forward towards your nose, and then start to move down into a little bit of a squat. So hips going back, and then I want you to, from that seat, you're going to arc your rib, rib cage up and over to the side, elbows stay narrow, so up from your knees and then back down with your breath. Into that little bit of a squat, up and over to one side, pressing the ribs to the sky, elbows stay narrow, and then down again. Big breath in, reach, turn, and release. Again, over, and a little bit of a squat. One more on this side, up and over, and then down. Second side up 
Reach the rib cage to the sky, elbows narrow, narrow toward your nose. And down, sitting back, lift, breathe, open this entire side body, pressing it to the sky. Watch that it's not rotating too much here. So it's just a side bend right now. Down, lift, breathe, and down. And up. One more on this side, little squat. And back up. Excellent. From here, stand on one foot, arms out to the side. Find your balance, get stable. Take the leg out to the side as far as it will go, keeping your body as upright as possible, and then back down. Ten times. Lift and lower. Keeping your knees straight, legs straight. And switch sides. Lift and lower. Working on this plane of motion, seeing if everything can be as stable as possible while you abduct that leg. All of the muscles that are stabilizing this standing hip also working really hard. Nice. Now play with hip flexion and extension a little bit. So just bringing the leg forward, keeping everything stable, hip flexion, and then go back behind you, hip extension. Now what wants to happen is your body wants to pitch forward here as you get into the tight muscles that exist in the front. Your belly muscles are the ones that easily let go, but I want you to add extra attention to the belly muscles right now and just make the butt and hamstring pull the leg behind you so nothing else moves. Then up into hip flexion, and then back hip extension. Let's do that 10 times. Again, that standing hip is being loaded, working hard. Really a lot of attention as you go back behind you. And one more, and then switch sides. Pull it up, flexion, back, extension, with as little motion forward as possible. Up and back, feel that glute, up, Letting the inner thigh, back inner thigh stay lifting also. The glute is going to want to help by pulling the leg out and the knee out. And it's one way to get it to activate more easily. But I really want that full leg to go back behind you. Just like when you're walking, that back inner thigh has to pull back toward the sky as well. Two more. Excellent. One more standing. Uh, let's go all the way into putting your hand behind you. If you can get your heel all the way to your hand, then again, belly in, shoulders back, and try to press the heel into your hand. Activate your hamstring on that back side of your body. Press, release, press, release. If you can't quite get it there, just curl it up and squeeze it. If you can hold it up there and press, that's going to make that hamstring really work and the quad has to lengthen. Release it out, switch sides. I'll give you a second if that was too fast of a transition. Pull it up, belly in, press, release. You might get a cramp in that hamstring. If you do, do a couple curls.
and release it down. Coming down onto your hands and knees and round and arch your back. Let's take it one vertebra at a time to start today. Starting at the base of your tailbone, go ahead and tuck your tailbone. Rounding one at a time so you feel the low belly really activate as you go up into the rib cage. Pressing your shoulder blades wide, but not so wide that you get a lot of tension in the front of your chest. Then tuck your chin, let your head come down. Now from your tailbone, go the other way, leaving your head Letting it arch through your middle back, or low back, middle back, all the way up into your shoulders, and finally your head. Now start at your head. Tuck your chin just like we did in standing, then up through the shoulders, one vertebra at a time. Feel all of your abdominals start to turn on. Control each segment as you go into rounding, all the way to your tailbone. Good, now head up, all the way down. See if you can leave the tailbone tucked until the very end. And then just move between the two, round and arch. And then come up to having a seat on your chair and grab your block and your strap so that they're close. Go ahead and put your strap around your knees so both feet go in and then tighten it down. Sit really tall, put a little bit of an arch in your back. So find the balance where rounding is and really arched it and find the middle so you're in neutral or slightly arched just because we want to find those muscles. And then with this strap placed around your knees, go ahead and pull out against that strap. Press, hold a second, release. Press, hold a second, release. We're going to turn on these muscles on the outside of your hips that help control the position of the femur bone. If you have knees that go into the midline or knees that go out, this can adjust the position to be straight. It also can address a pelvis that might be a little bit disparagent. So one hip doing something different than the other, which can affect the SI joint or up even into your shoulders. So here, collarbones wide, tall, find your breath again, press, release, press. Release. Relax. Let your back kind of round and then reset into that neutral position or slightly arched. And again, press and release. And just notice how is it from one side to the other? Do you feel like there's a difference in where the contraction happens? Ten more. One. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Keep constant pressure out against that strap. Hold it out there. Elbows slightly out from your body and then rotate your arm back. Feel it move in this shoulder joint. Everything else gets to be stable. The pressing out at your knees keeps the strong stability happening there. Then bring your arms in and out. So arms are abducted about 30 degrees. We're in the most open position for the shoulder. All the way in, all the way out, working that rotator cuff, continuing to pull out with your knees and your hips. Notice if there's any clunking in the shoulder or how well you rotate it out there. Feel the muscles. Is it different from one side to the other? Can you find them to be more the same, more symmetrical, more balanced? Are you still pressing out with that strap? Good. From there, glide your arms up like you're making a snow angel. All the way up, keep pressing out on that strap. I know those muscles should be getting tired. All the way up, all the way down, 10 times. As you go up, let your rib cage be more buoyant. Let it lift, get taller through your torso. and release it down and release your legs. Nice job. Go ahead and take that strap off. And then sit tall, cross the right ankle over the left knee. Just use this to open up your hips. Some people's hips open really easily this way. Some people notice the tightness. Some people have really different ability to rotate the hip in the socket from the right to the left. And that can be that difference between having one foot that you plant to like kick a ball and one foot that moves. Often we see one side tighter than the other here. So open it up. Now, if it feels good to you, Go ahead and lean your torso a little bit forward with a straight back. So hip hinging. And if it feels fine to be there, you may want to extend your arms to the sky. That will increase the work that your back is doing. And just hold. Give me three deep breaths here. Fully in. Fully out. Fully in. Fully out, fully in, fully out. Good, before we switch sides, let's own that action. So I want you to just bring your leg in front of you, bring it down, hip flex a little bit, rotate the leg, try to get it back up on the knee, and then unhook it, rotate, and down. Do your best to keep your torso upright. I wanted to sit back as I did that, but I'm working those muscles around my trunk to keep it stable. Hip flex, rotate, down, release. Couple more of these. Last one. And switch sides. First, take that leg up, cross the ankle over the knee. Just feel it. How does that hip rotate in the socket? And then lean a little bit forward. Connect back to your breathing. If that feels okay, take it 
longer and taller into your torso, lengthening the lever, adding a little weight to the back muscles. Lean it forward and breathe fully in, fully out, fully in, fully out, fully in, full exhale. Squeeze that air out of your lungs. And up and release and then own that action, taking it down. Hip flex, still body, rotate the ankle, try to hook it up on the knee and down. Let's do five of these. Up, over, or five more I guess. Four, three, Two, and one. Excellent. Then grab your block, place it between your knees. Go back into that little bit of an arch and find your adductors. Squeeze and release that block with the inside of your legs. Hug it in. Release it out. Finding the muscles all the way on the inside of your hip bones, all the way to the inner thigh. Sit bones get to spread wide. Slight internal rotation with the leg bone as you abduct, excuse me, adduct, bring it toward the body. Squeeze it in. Squeeze and release. Feel what's going on in your body. Show up to the present moment and notice what is the sensation between the two sides. Hold it long enough that you can find are both sides of your inner thighs actually showing up to the party? Or does one side activate more easily than the other? Do 10 more, squeeze, hold long enough that you can really feel it, release, squeeze, release. And release the block down. Staying with your chair or your block, turn it so that you can use it to put your hands on and then bend over to it. Slight bend at your knees, straight body, connect into your butt muscles and find your glutes to lift you up so your hip hinging, just working on that, pull down toward the floor Bend at the knees, hip hinge back over. 10 of those, lift, all the way up, slight bend, straight spine, everything in order, down, up, and down. The coordination of the muscles in your pelvis with the muscles in your spine and the muscles in your legs. Slight rotation at the leg bones as they go up, and hip hinge back over. One more. And then bring your hands down. This time take right foot forward and your left foot back. And you can keep them hip width or put them like they're on a balance beam, whatever you want to work today. And then pull your right hip back and your left hip forward. And then find whatever is the pull on your front hamstring. Get that front leg all the way straight. And then if this is enough for you to breathe into this hamstring, just stay there and breathe. If you can go down a little more, take that position. 
and just breathe some length into the muscle that goes from the back of the knee all the way up to the sit bone. I want you to feel it in the belly of the muscle though, not up around the attachment. Hang in there. Find that length. Full breath in, fully out, attention to your exhale. And then let's add this rotation. So crossing the body, right foot forward, left hand on the block or chair, and then rotate open to the right. Hips stay stable, squeeze your belly. Open your chest and shoulders. Try to get your whole rib cage to rotate to the sky and then bring it down. Take a breath. Inhale. Take it up. Exhale. Release. I'm going to change the breath down at the bottom now. Big breath in. Exhale, twist, so you're squeezing your belly while you exhale and come up. Inhale, fill it up to lower. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Go ahead and switch legs. One foot forward, one foot back. Square your hips. So pulling that right hip forward, pushing the left hip back, come to square, straight legs. If you can come down onto your elbows, maybe that's where you're at today. Maybe your body says, no way. Stay right here and just breathe. Again, find it in the belly of the hamstring, find that length. Hug to the midline, legs squeezing toward the center, drawing energy all the way up from your feet into the pelvis. And then let's add the twist. So exhale down, inhale, lift and open. Exhale, down, inhale, open. And then down, let's change the breath. Exhaling up, squeeze, inhale to lower. Exhale up, squeeze, inhale to lower. Exhale up, squeeze, inhale lower. And then coming down, downward dog or cats and dogs, your choice with how your wrists are feeling today. Fingers on the floor if you're in a downward dog. Thumb and forefinger or thumb and pinky finger pad gripping to be safe in the wrists. Feeling your shoulders slide toward your ears a little bit and the shoulder blades pulling down toward the floor. Two more breaths, fully in, fully out. One more. And come down, all the way down onto your belly. Hold your hands underneath your forehead and release your spine. Let's work some hips a little bit here. Bend your right leg up, hamstring curl. Slide that leg out to the side, not letting, making everything else still in your body. Bring your heel down toward the floor on the inside of your calf 
and then untwist that leg, bring, bring it in and release it down. Stay with the right leg, hamstring curl up, slide the knee wide, letting the hip rotate in the socket, coming down, then leg comes up, pull the leg in, release it down. So we're moving into what we call a pre-crawl position, developmental position of being able to push yourself up, but we're also asking the hips to rotate just like they need to. Continue this, hamstring curl up, slide the knee wide, letting the hip rotate, bringing the foot down, and just notice if your whole spine or body wants to rotate, even if you have to not take the foot all the way to the floor, find wherever it is that your body kind of stops naturally. What's that natural rotation in that hip? Can we ask for just slightly more than that? And then bring it up, slide the leg back in, and release it down. Once more, up, out, lower down, up, in and release. Second side, hamstring curl, knee goes wide, foot comes down to the floor, ankle goes high, slide the knee in, meet the other leg, release it down. Hamstring curl up, knee goes wide, foot comes down, slide it up, pull the knee in, hamstring curl to the floor. Keep going, let's do three more on this side. And then into hand leg opposite lift. So arms out in front of you. This time we're going to go back into hip extension. So right leg lifting. Feel your pelvis on the ground. Both hip bone and pubic bone level. Pull your low belly up and in as you take the leg back so that the tightness in the hip is countered by some attention to your belly muscles so that you have good stability for your spine as your leg comes behind you. And then take that opposite arm up. Working opposite body function, hip and shoulder. Hold, release it down, second side. Lift, feel that leg go back behind you and the stability in your belly so that you don't just increase the arch in your back. Lift that opposite arm. Hold and breathe. And switch. Take it up. Hold. Release. Lift. Hold. See if you can get a little longer, tuck your front ribs under. That's also a place where we want to keep good stability right now. Switch, lift, and release. Now if it feels okay in your back, bring your elbows underneath where your wrists just, or where your, excuse me, Elbows under your shoulders. Let's go that way. Then pull your forearms apart. Take your shoulder blades down your back. And then have enough stability in your belly that you can feel the gentle arch happen without any pinching. Long belly. And then take your knees wide and the bottom of your feet together. Now, if this is too much for your low back, then just come down, hands on your forehead. If not, hold this position and work that the extension all the way from the shoulders into the hips, belly long, and then press the bottom of your feet together. Feel that activate up into your glutes and release. 
Press, release. Let's do 10 of these. Press, release, getting the femur bone to rotate in the socket, the pelvis to be in a little bit of extension, the lumbar extension and thoracic extension all the way down the line. Active Cobra. And release your legs, then feet on the floor, tops of your feet down, and hands right by your rib cage. Lift your shoulders away from the floor, draw your elbows down, take yourself up into whatever size Cobra feels appropriate for your back. A little bit of extension and then lower yourself back down. Again, lift, shoulders lifting up and away from the floor, hands drawing down toward your hips, gentle press. Your elbows can certainly be wide here. That creates that most open position for the shoulder again. Once more, lift, press, elbows drawing back or wide, and release it down. Reach back and grab one foot. If you need to use your strap for this, you may grab it and hook it around your foot so that you can do a quad stretch. Your other option is to roll to the side and that would give you a little bit more space. If you can be here, pelvis down into the floor, knee extending long, belly, drawing long on the floor with enough tension that you're maintaining good spinal alignment and neutral pelvis in this position. Breathe some length into the front of that leg. Now let's add a press out so that we're activating the quad muscle in this lengthened position, if that feels appropriate for you today. So kick away from your body, resist it with your hand, and then release. Kick away, feel the muscle activate, and release. You should get a little bit more stretch happening. Press or length happening really. Press the foot away from you, resist it with your hand, and release. Again, press, release. One more, and switch sides. Bend it up, grab the foot, Knee down on the floor, pelvis down on the floor, lengthening your belly. Hold and breathe. Then kick that foot away from you. Press, firing up the thigh. Release. Press. Release, press, release, press, release. Last one. Awesome. Press up onto your hands and knees. We're going to use this to still find length in the front side of our body. So opposite hand, the opposite foot reaching back behind you. As you go up, there's a tendency to let the belly fall toward the floor. So pull it up. Use the length that you just found in your thigh muscles. Pull that back. There's not a wrong way to do this. You can Use this for your shoulder, you can use this for your hip, 
Squeeze toward the midline, knee to the midline, elbow, hold it all up there. Find your balance, find your breath. Release it down. Switch sides, lift it up, grab on. Belly active, shoulder active, thigh active, squeeze to the midline, inner thigh lifting. Three breaths. And release it down. Take a child's pose, knees wide. Back as far as your body will let you. Just take a moment to recover, find length there. And then roll onto your back. Both legs out straight on the floor, arms out straight from your shoulders into a crocodile twist. Right foot on top of your left toes from the right inner thigh, from the right inner heel all the way up to the right inner thigh. Rotate your body, turn your head to the side and hold. Find your breath, squeeze your butt, tighten your thighs. Crocodile is great for anywhere that there's still twist in the body. A hip that's elevated, a rib cage that's twisted, shoulder that's out of alignment. Crocodile really hits a whole bunch of those places. Even a balance in the low back or scoliosis. Untwist. Switch. Rotate. Inner heel, inner thigh, left inner hip bone pulling you over. Squeeze your butt, tighten your thighs, pull your toes back. Soften your shoulders, soften your neck, but turn your head. Untwist, bend both knees, pelvic tilts, gently rock your hips backward and forward, moving through your low back. And then right into cross crawls, both legs straight on the floor, both arms down by your sides. Heels down into the floor, get strong and straight. Nothing else moves in your spine as you pull the opposite arm and opposite leg up, bend the knee, set it down. Let the hip spin in the socket. Let the shoulder move out to the side, lift up toward your ear slightly, making room and for that shoulder to move so there's no impingement as you take that arm over your head. All the way up. Switching sides each time, all the way down. Enough activation in your torso that that's being stable. Keep going.
and then both legs pull up, then pelvis heavy to the floor, tailbone side heavy, but you're in a table position. I want you to tuck your chin, roll your body up so that you're up and arms are lifted off the floor. You have a slight curve in your low back. Your neck is working to keep you there. And then go ahead and bicycle your legs. 10 bicycles. Hold in your belly. Hold it up there. Stay there. A little more for your belly. Backward bicycles. And release it down. Roll into a push up position. Move into your plank. Roll your feet to one side and take it all the way up. You could do this on your knees if you need to. Hold it up there. Back to the center. As you move, hips and shoulders move as a unit as your legs roll to the side. Come back to your toes. Take it over. Feel all of the muscles that support your whole body, your spine and your pelvis and your shoulders move in that coordinated action as you twist and open it up. Two more to each side. That's one. Last one. And then release down onto your hands and knees. Once more. Round and arch your back, cats and dogs. And then roll onto your back, do a couple of femur rotations, and then you choose legs up over a block or the chair or into a Shavasana, legs out straight. Deeply begin to connect to your breathing. Notice your breath. Become the witness. You are the witness. Notice the sensations that arise. Witness even what's happening in your brain. in your mind. Without trying to control it, just also don't let it take you in or take your attention. See if you can stay in a disciplined place in your mind for just two minutes. As you feel the sensations of your body, listen to the sounds around you, connect fully to your breath.
you are part of the pulsation of the universe. Your body is deeply intelligent and knows exactly what to do. When we support that deep knowing, it can work to achieve optimal health, pain-free bodies, optimal movement, optimal blood flow, lymph drainage, all the things that create that vital health and joy in our bodies and in our life. When we do it with our friends in this community, it is exponential because the vibrations are bigger and we get to send that awesome energy out into the world. You may, of course, turn off your computer and stay in this deep place or come back for a few moments of social as we say goodbye. Come here. Come here. We're going to play a week.